And the question that we really need to ask ourselves is this. Do we love Him more than we love those that are around us? Do we love Him, God that is, more so than our spouses? Do we love God more than we love our children? Do we love God more than our associates and our relatives and our family members and our friends? Do we love God more than the material possessions that are in our lives? Do we love God more than the possibility or the prospect of prestige? Do we love God more than we love ourselves? Because if we take the time to really explore, then we would not make an allegiance with someone or something or with things that could ultimately lead our heart and our devotions away from God himself. Because it's never God's desire that we as a people devoid ourselves and fall into a state of apostasy. And apostasy means falling away, backsliding, uh, becoming idolatrous in our worship towards Him, that we turn our backs on Him, that we find, as it is in marital situations, when adultery is committed, we find someone else to become our lovers. And, and the thing is that you can even become emotionally tied into someone uh, and never leave your physical marriage. But when that person is fulfilling you emotionally and mentally and intellectually and has become more of a friend to you than your spouse has, has become more significant to you than your spouse has, then you have opened up the doors for something wicked that God has never intended to enter into a marital situation especially into a relationship with him. And sometimes, unknowingly, as I stated before, we entertain demons unaware, not realizing that we truly are. And that causes us to be in, in an adulterous situation with God. And sometimes, because our heart is so in tune and so involved in what's going on, that we forget to serve God, and it happens over a period of time gradually. I, looking at Ahab, don't believe that this was something that happened instantaneously. But I believe by the sensitivity of his wife and women, you know how you are. You know how to gain an advantage over your man. Come on now. We know the truth. We know how you can put those inflections and that, that softness in your voice, that warmness, that way that you have of talking to us that seemingly melts us as butter to the point that we become putty in your hands. And, and most of you know that you're doing that by manipulation. You know that you can manipulate this man because he is so in love with you to the point that he will do anything that you ask him to. That is the nature of Eve. That's what happened to Adam when he listened to her and ate of the forbidden fruit that God told both of them not to eat of. And Ahab, in this case, recaptured that moment in the garden where Eve presented him with something that God commanded him not to eat of. And you have the same story repeating itself here when Ahab began to bite of the seed of Baal and found out that it was something that it was pleasing to him because there was a lot of lewdness and sexual lewdness associated with this and a lot of wickedness that he was being exposed to. And the Bible says that sin does have pleasure. So don't think that sin does not have pleasure to it. It is full of pleasure. And most of us stayed in sin for as long as we did because there was enjoyment in it. There was a hollowness to it. But there was also a sense of missing something. But there's also an excitement that comes along with serving sin. Think about it. What was your favorite sin practice? Was it drinking? Was it fornicating? Was it smoking? Was it lying? Was it cheating? Was it stealing? 
Was it causing discord? Was it gossiping? Was it anger? Was it something that we have not yet mentioned? Sometimes people get involved in various sexual sins, bestiology, and, and even down to uh, menage a trois and things of that nature. Some of us have even spent a life in criminal activity. Some of us snorted cocaine and, 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 and freebased. Some of us even were strung out on other things such as barbiturates and, and, and prescription drugs and even over-the-counter medications such as Benadryl or NyQuil. And some of us even dibbled and dabbled in sniffing glue because we were introduced to it by someone that had an ill intent of wickedness in their hearts that never was regenerated from their wickedness, but yet they were so influential and their words caused us to be able to even look at what they were saying and had a willingness within our soulish realm, in our minds, our psyche, our ways of thinking to say, yes, I'm going to participate in this to experience it, but not fully understanding or comprehending the dangers that lied within your participation in that particular thing or sin. And sin does show us that it is illusional and delusional to the point that it's very deceptive to think that there is full enjoyment. But how many times in the world before you were saved that you went on a guilt trip after committing certain acts? Maybe it was something that you did against someone. Maybe it's something that you did against your own body. Sometimes shooting up and things of that nature. But yet when you came down off of that high of the moment, that euphoric feeling, you began to feel guilt. That is the spirit of condemnation. And when you are still in sin, that spirit of condemnation serves two purposes. One, it's the devil convicting you of wrongs that you've done and knowingly that you have done those wrongs. So now he's convicting you of something that he led you into in the first place. And now he wants to condemn you for experiencing what he has suggested to you. So now he is duking you. He has suckered you in, pulled you in cause you the taste of his fruit and now he wants to not only condemn you but now he also wants to accuse you before the father as being the one that committed such a heinous crime. On the other hand, what the Holy Ghost uses the spirit of condemnation for is to lead you to the place of repentance. That you will never walk in that thing again. That you would accept God's forgiveness and that you first and foremost will ask for God's forgiveness and secondly that you will walk in God's forgiveness and that you would repent and never walk and do that thing again. But what happens most in the vast majority of the time is that the devil dukes us to make us feel so bad about what we've done and he convinces us of the wrong that we've done. But listen to this, then he convinces you all over again to partake again, even in the thing that he told you himself that it was wrong. How ludicrous is that for us to continuously do something that makes us feel bad? I look at people that drink, and even when I was in the world, I did drink. Not the way that some people do, but I did drink, and I'm not condemning those that drink because, again, they can be forgiven. But one of the things that I didn't like was the after feeling of coming down off of that high or being drunk and how sick. In some cases, that it made how it made me feel, and, and some of the things that went on bodily wise that really grossed me out and would gross you out for me to even communicate those things to you. But sin has a way of bringing us into a situation when we're innocent, when we've lived a pure life, when we know what it's like to serve God and be a worshiper of God. And when sin takes a hold of us and pulls us back out into the world, it dukes us and it causes us to be in a situation 
that we will never recover from if we don't open up our eyes and recognize that this is the thing that God wants from us. Now, this spirit of Jezebel, listen, she was also a deceptive spirit, a lying spirit. She was also a murderous spirit. And she also killed the prophets of God. Now, a lot of times people say that if a woman dresses up and puts on makeup, that she's a Jezebel. I disagree to this point. Because I do believe that a woman should beautify herself. But if you watch the various styles, listen to me carefully, the various styles of makeup and how the makeup is applied in the application, you could do so in the way that looks tastefully and professionally and brings out the, the, the things and the characteristics of your facial features that are not necessarily seen without it. Now, some women are naturally beauty where they don't have to use makeup. And then there are some ways in which the makeup can be applied that actually reeks of the world, that reeks of prostitution, that reeks of evilness, that reeks of satanic worship, that reeks of things that are not befitting or beholding of a man or the woman of God in their character. So we have to watch how we apply it. There is a way to apply it tastefully. There is also a way of applying it in, a, in a such a fashion that you won't have to look at, like the world or part of the world. They even used this when a woman wore red, but Jezebel was a woman that actually killed the things of God. Because she killed all the prophets because she did not want the prophets to prophesy against her. Going back to the, old, to the New Testament, this is the very reason why John the Baptist was beheaded. Because of the fact that the king had taken his brother's wife. And because he lusted after his newly found wife, who was his brother's wife's daughter, who he was lusting after. And the wife knew this. So she had her dance before the king. And when she finished dancing, the mother instructed the daughter to ask whatever you want because the king's heart will be moved to grant you your petition. So the daughter, following the mother's instructions, asked for the head of John the Baptist. Because John the Baptist, even in prison while he was there, cried out that it was unlawful for you to have your, your brother's wife as your own and that you were living in sin but the king knew that and his heart was moved that's why he initially refused to kill John the Baptist but ultimately to pay his vow vow and his debt of what he had spoken out of his mouth which leads us to another point be very careful about what you state out of your mouth because God will require you to live up to your vow unless you come back and repent and state the reasons as to why you cannot honor your vow, but bow out of it gracefully and with integrity and with the wisdom of God, keeping your face and your integrity and your reputation intact. But here, going back to Jezebel, she also knew that Ahab wanted a plot of land that belonged to Naboth. And because Naboth wasn't willing to surrender to Ahab, Jezebel came with a, with a plot and connived to come up with a scheme so that she would have Naboth killed, brought charges against them, had him stoned, took the land and presented it to Ahab. So she was a murdering spirit. Not only was she an idolater, but anyone that serves idols also is associated with murder because of the fact that they offer up sacrifices and more so human sacrifices in this case for the sake of offering sacrifices to their God that they may be found pleasing in the sight of their God. And this is is a major travesty to have this done and to be spoken of 